seated. Good morning, Northwest, and the Zoom Northwest, and those will be watching later on our YouTube channel. Um, of course, today is Valentine's Day. It's been interesting, woo yeah, it's been interesting reading uh, some of the stories about how some of our uh, husbands and wives met. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, if you remember last year, Sherry had bought me a, a three-pound milk chocolate uh, Hershey bar. Uh, it was, I mean, the thing was huge. I had y'all guess, and some of y'all were thinking it was some kind of a picture, maybe of the Last Supper and all that kind of stuff, and I was thinking, yeah, after eating that, it will be my Last Supper. Uh, so I told her this year, she always, you know, wants to buy me something and stuff, and she bought me some uh, jogger pants, uh, but it had... Uh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse on it, so I thought, well, I better not wear those today, and a, and a t-shirt, because I'm into t-shirts, I know, Barb, I don't know why not, right, um, and thank you, honey, I see you on there, on Zoom, uh, but I told her, I said, you know, uh, yeah, you can buy me some chocolate, she knows me well, I said, but just buy me something small, uh, just maybe a little milk chocolate heart, or something like that, and I was telling Ron and Anita, I said, lo and behold, she goes, I wonder when she gave me the gifts, I looked, another three-pound milk chocolate, Hershey bar, 6,750 calories worth. And uh, she goes, well, I couldn't find anything smaller. I'm like, where do you shop? <laughs> she goes, well, David, you don't have to eat the whole thing in one day. You know, and, uh, and, it's, and it's 45 servings. Think about that, 45 servings. I'm thinking, that's a month and a half. Do you think that thing's going to last a month and a half, sit there from, no way. I mean, wow. Anyway, I thank you, honey. Uh, it was, part of it was good yesterday already. You know, we're, uh, we're talking about all struck wonder. That's our, uh, that's kind of my theme for this year. Uh, no matter what happens this year, I want to just keep my eyes focused on God. I want to have uh, a wonder I'd be filled with wonder. I want to be awestruck when I look at God that no matter what happens, I mean, we have an amazing God. Amen, church? Uh, and he always keeps us, uh, I mean, our eyes wide open. I was telling somebody yesterday, uh, I was having an ch opportunity to, uh, to, to share my faith, and, um, and, I, was, and I was telling them about... Uh, all struck wonder and different things like that and and also one of the things i love about uh, sherry teaching the the younger kids and she really misses that a lot but uh, i remember she had keegan and 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 tatum uh in in her class and uh she always talked about them and how much she loves you all still uh she can't believe how old are you now keegan 14 wow you're getting old dude i'm glad i'm not uh but uh, and, and other ones, uh, uh, Sadie and, and, and uh, Amelia, you know, she, she, she loves them. Uh, and, and the thing she talks about is whenever she tells these Bible stories, I mean, they get right in the Word, and, and she tells these stories, and she'll be talking about David uh, slaying Goliath or whatever, and their eyes are giving, and they go, no way. I mean, no, no, there's, I'm, really, really? You know, and, and they're just like blown away by this. And, and Jesus walking on the water, and, and they go, what, what, what? I mean, she goes, they just repeat that over and over and over. They're just blown away by that. And I think, what's wrong with us as adults that we don't get blown away when we read these Things that all it calls us to be filled with wonder. And as we talk about just rest, and I want to go ahead and give you a heads up. Man, I'm thinking this thing's going to be five parts. <laughs> and, and the reason is, I mean, I'm learning some things because one of the things that I've learned the last couple of weeks as we've been talking about just rest 
There's a lot of folks that told me, I don't know if that relates to me. I don't know if that applies to me. I don't know how that can apply to me. I don't know how it can rest because I've got a lot of work in front of me. Um, my marriage is on the rocks. Got a lot of work. I've got a lot of work trying to keep my kids up and keep them uh, not being in depression or, or, or a spouse and my spouse and my family and, and, and trying to keep them up and not being depressed. And I really have to work on myself a whole lot because, to be honest with you, I'm getting depressed. I talk to people that own businesses and they go, man, it's, it's, there's, it's going to be so much work just trying to, so much work ahead of us and trying to just keep our business afloat. So, I started thinking about just rest. And I believe that we have the wrong idea of where rest is. You know, last week as we were looking at uh, Psalm 121, we can rest in the fact that, that God is always watching over us. He is always watching over us. He's our shield by day and our shield by night. He doesn't sleep. He never slumbers. And for some reason or another, sometimes we go to bed at night and we have a hard time going to sleep because our mind is going 100 to nothing because of things that we're concerned about or things that we're worried about, and especially with this pandemic. And I just want to say, you know, to, to people, I was talking to a lady yesterday, and, uh, and she was going to be getting the the the, uh, the uh, vaccine but she was very concerned because i mean there's a lot of people that's gotten very sick from this very very sick and a lot of times we don't hear about those but i know personally a lot of people that have gotten very sick thought they were going to die that's how they felt and so i just want to say this if you want to get the vaccine, great, get the vaccine. If you don't want to get the vaccine, great, don't get the vaccine. You know what? I, we need to quit judging each other and give people a break. But I want to tell you something. God has got this. Amen? God has got this. And he's got you. And he knows your name, as we talked about last week. You know, for some of us... Um, I don't know about you, a lot of us, when you go to work, how many of you just can't wait to get home to lay on your couch and watch TV sometimes? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, or to have a vacation, or to have two or three days. I always told Sherry, when I get sick, I, sometimes I enjoy it, because then I don't have to take telephone calls. I don't have to do anything. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soak every ounce of this sickness and, and take advantage of this thing and I'm going to lay on the couch and I'm going to watch old, I love old westerns I'm going to watch those things until I can't stand them anymore but you know what what I found with this pandemic there are a lot of us the first couple of weeks we thought man this is hog heaven man we don't have to do anything we can just lay on the couch hey I can, watch, I can binge watch Netflix or, or, or some other Disney or, or whatever uh, maybe just you know go and get all these movies and, and watch all of those things and it was great for two weeks Sherry was telling me about Bon Jovi this morning we, we love Bon Jovi I'm, I'm sorry if you don't like if you're not a Bon Jovi fan you can just tune out uh, right now for a couple of seconds but we saw him in concert I mean we just have always been a big Bon Jovi fan and and he was talking about on, on Twitter I believe it was that uh, how, how how he was tired of doing nothing and and he was ready to go back out on tour because he's tired of resting Who was the first person in the Bible that we read about resting? God. Why did he rest? So he created the world. You want to expound on that? Couldn't have been easy? 
Yeah, but I thought God is all-powerful above all else. We, 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 we were singing that song. You know, God, uh, you know, what an awesome God. You know, God is powerful. Pardon? Example. Flip over to Genesis chapter 2. Because it tells us why. And, and you know, I think there, there's some uh, validity to, to, to the example part. But this was an eye-opener for me. And it brought in me awestruck wonder. In chapter 2 of Genesis... So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. Why did God rest? Because he had completed his work. He had completed all of creation. Everything was done. There was nothing left to do because every day he said, after looking at his creation of that day, he said, it is good. And then when he finished creating humans, he said, it is very good. So when God rested, if you keep on reading in Genesis chapter 2, Did that mean that God got, on, got in his lazy boy recliner and kicked back and just chilled? When God rested, the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve, but Adam in particular, that he was going to tend to to the garden this was before sin so here's Adam he's busy he's working he's tending to the garden and even after Eve was created uh, the Bible is telling us about that, that God had created this lush garden and, and these trees and these trees were just loaded with fruits and, and, and the best of the, the fruits and, and so that's where they were to get their food so that means that they would have to go out and pick their food pick their fruit and prepare their food but guess what all of this was going to be in fellowship with God See, when God rested from his work, everything was complete. It was so that he could enjoy his creation. It was so that he could enjoy Adam and Eve and the animals and all of that, that, that he could enjoy the fellowship with all of his creation and that they too could enjoy the fellowship with God. And in that, they found rest. You see, rest is not in kicking our feet up and sitting back in a recliner like a lot of us maybe have done uh, through part of this pandemic anyway because how many of us were very restless? Well, we're, we're resting, but we're restless. We go to bed at night and we get restless. We get agitated. We get, we get our brains going and, 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 and we become filled with anxiety. But we're resting. But you see, resting is not just not doing anything. Resting is finding fellowship with God in the things that we do do. Flip over to... Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12, because what happened 
when you get to chapter 3 of Genesis, Satan comes on the scene. You remember what happened when Satan comes on the scene and he tempted Adam and Eve and, and, and they, they disobeyed God? You remember what happened when God came walking into the garden to fellowship with them? You remember what Adam and Eve did? They hid. That's right. They were ashamed. That fellowship was broken because of their disobedience. They weren't restful, were they? So God had another plan that he wanted to bless a group of people with rest. And he promised this to Abraham, that it would be from his offspring. And that nation became the nation of Israel, the 12 sons of, of Jacob. And so they're in Egyptian bondage. They're in slavery. 400 years. And so God, he promises them that I'm going to deliver you because they're crying out to God. They're crying, you know, for help and, and they're distressed and they're calling out to God. And so God said, all right, you know what? I'm going to rescue you and I'm going to choose Moses and he's going to lead you from this Egyptian slavery. I am going to release you and I'm going to send you to a land. And you remember what he called that land? The promised land. He called it a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It's the land that, that whenever the 12 spies, they went in and they spied it out. They, they, and they came back with this report that, yeah, man, everything's just like what, what God said it is going to be. Man, the, 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 the fruit is, is lush. Matter of fact, they were carrying a cluster of grapes, and, and they have to carry it on pole between two people. And so here's what God tells them in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 8. He tells them that when you get to this land, your pattern of worship will change. Today, all of you are doing as you please because you have not yet arrived at the place of rest. The land the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession. But you will soon cross the Jordan River and live in the land the Lord your God is giving you. When he gives you rest from all of your enemies and you're living safely in the land, you must bring everything I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, your sacred offerings, and your offerings to fulfill a vow to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. So God had another place of rest for his people. But let me ask you something. This place of rest, does that mean that they were going to go into this promised land, this land that's flowing with milk and honey? And again, did he mean that oh, they're going to go down and they're going to have mats and they're just going to lay around on mats and, and, and fruit was just going to fall from the sky and just fall right into their, to their hands and into their laps? That they weren't going to do anything? No, they were going to do things. They were going to work the land. They were going to, they were going to harvest the, the fruits and the vegetables and, and the livestock. They were going to be busy. But it wasn't going to be work. Again, God, even after he uh, uh, cursed Adam, was saying, you know what? Yeah, you're going to work the soil of the, of the land now, but it's going to be by the sweat of your brow. It's not going to be rest. And anybody's mow grass, you know that's true, right? Or try to dig a garden. <laughs> but God, in His grace, and God in His mercy, He says, all right, I'm choosing this group of people, and I want to bless you, and I want to bless your socks off, so that the whole world will know that I am God. And he calls it a place of rest. And again, 
what he's talking about because they are going to be busy in this land and they're going to be harvesting, they're going to be planting, they're going to be taking care of livestock, they're going to be raising families, they're going to be raising grandchildren, all of those things. But guess what? He called it a place of rest because they were going to be, God wanted a tight fellowship with them, an intimate relationship with them. And when we're in an intimate relationship with God, it's rest. That's where we find rest. Flip back to uh, Exodus chapter 17. Because God had just told them, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this place of rest. I'm going to give you rest from your enemies too. Uh, and I want to bless you. But before they get to the promised land, what did they do for about 40 years? Gripe and complain about everything. And so in, in chapter 17 of Exodus, actually uh, the, the whole community, they're griping and complaining because if you look at verses 1 and 2, they were thirsty. They wanted water. And they started demanding water. From Moses. And then they, 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 they said, you know what? We'd have been better off in Egypt. We'd have been better off in slavery. Well, if it was so great, why were you crying out to the Lord, right? I mean, it, it, it's funny. My mom and I were talking last night on the telephone, and, and we started talking about how na naive sometimes we are. What, what she was talking about in Arkansas, and I was talking to Ryan in Houston, it's, it's about five degrees. They're, you know, they're talking about snow, maybe some ice, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, and I was talking about my mom in Arkansas around Searcy. Uh, you know, they were getting some cold weather and had some ice and, and, and stuff like that. And, and, and there were some older people in, in the Harding place that were telling her, oh, wow, you know, we don't ever get down below 30 degrees here, ever. And I'm like, uh, what? I mean, that's not true. I mean, I've been in Arkansas, and it was 22 below zero actual temperature for two weeks in a row. Snow, a lot of snow. I remember in Searcy, 15-inch snows a lot of times. I'm telling you, the weather cycles. But these older people, they forgot it was like it never gets below 30. And that's the way these people were, God's people. They forgot what it was like in Egypt and how they had cried out to God because they were so distressed. But because they were thirsty, instead of going to God, they started griping and complaining uh, to Moses about God and the fact that they're thirsty and they wanted to know in verse 3 why did you bring us out of Egypt so in verse 7 Moses named the place because he did God told him to get a stick strike the rock and you'll get water and that's what happened water came but Moses named the place Massa which means test and Meribah which means arguing because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord here with us or not? They did not believe that God could do what he said he would do. They lost faith. They lost faith in God. They started questioning, wondering, you know, is, is God for us? <laughs> if he's for us, then what's going on? And I really want to talk to us here uh, at Northwest and, and that are on Zoom and, and, and YouTube because I want us to look at ourselves and our lives and our attitudes at this point.
Have we lost faith in God? Have you lost faith in God? Have you questioned God? God, are you, are you for us or not? As we've gone through the things that this nation has gone through over the last several months, politically, so much hate. Lord, are you with us or not? Have we lost faith? Have you lost faith in God? Next week, I've got one more, uh, one more passage we're really going to look at. But next week, we're going to we're going to look at something that I pray is good news for us because God still has this rest open for us. And it's available to you. Do I believe that? Do you live your life like that? Am I filled with worry? Am I filled with anxiety? Am I having trouble sleeping at night? Or if I go to sleep right off the bat, do I wake up at 2 a.m. And, and then I cannot go back to sleep? God says, man, I want to give you rest. And where that rest is, is in fellowship with Him. Man, when we're in intimate relation, man, when you have that intimate relationship with God, it's rest. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through. Look at, um, whoa, let me see what, the, what that passage is. It's over in Psalms. I think I got it written down here in the back. Yep, I'm glad I did that. Psalm 95. This is, this is Psalm 95 is written by David, and we'll see that next week uh, from, a, from a scripture. But David is writing this about 200 years after the nation of Israel enters the promised land. Did they find rest? Well, here's what we're going to see. Here's what David writes. He says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to Him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to Him. For the Lord is a great God. Amen? A great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people that he watches over the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. The Lord says, don't harden your hearts as Israel did at Meribah, as they did at Massa in the wilderness. Here it is, 200 years past. 
And David is saying, you know what, folks? We need to be praising God. We need to come with thanksgiving to God. We need to be awestruck with an awestruck wonder of this God who holds everything together with His hand and who made everything. But he says, if only we would listen to His voice today. i, I got to say this. I'm, I'm looking at Jill and I'm, and I'm looking at Dan over here, Nita and Ron and, 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 and Dean, and I'm, I'm not for sure all else. Uh, Meta, I know. Uh, different ones are, are doing the Bible study uh, on the on the U version. I think it, is that what it's called? U version uh, Bible study. It's on the Holy Spirit, and I don't know about y'all. I love reading the comments. Your comments. It, it is such a blessing to me. And and one of the things that. that that the, the, the author of this particular Bible study has been talking about is what? Listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who lives in you. The Holy Spirit who lives in me. God in me. This is God, the one who created the heavens and the earth. Holds everything together with his hand. He lives in you. He lives in me through his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person and he is alive and he is active and he is talking to you and he's talking to me. But here's the question Who has the microphone? The pandemic? the political leaders of our nation and of the world where we allow these things to strike fear and anxiety and worry that we're not even able to praise him and offer a thanksgiving to him and be awestruck by his wonders and that's what he's telling us church so listen because David is talking to, the, to a group of God's people 200 years later after this incident at Meribah and Massa. And he's reminding them, if only we would listen to his voice when? Tomorrow, next week, after the pandemic is done, after everybody's vaccinated or whatever. No, today. Amen, church? Today. Do not harden your hearts. For their and for for their your ancestors, here's what God is saying, for their your ancestors tested and they tried my patience. Dan, I was reading your uh comments this morning about the Holy Spirit and how we grieve the Holy Spirit because of our old disobedience, because of sin in our life. Do we understand that we grieve the Holy Spirit when we refuse to listen to God and we listen to the world and the culture and we let Satan grab the microphone in our lives? And he says when we do that, God says right here through David, the Holy Spirit, I mean, all Scripture is God-breathed. He said, for there your ancestors tested and tried my patience. How about you? How about me? Am I testing and trying the patience of God today? Because I refuse to listen to him. He says, man, even though they saw everything I did. For 40 years, I was angry with them. And I said, they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. And I don't say this in a preachy way, ugly way. I wrestled with this myself this week. If I've got unrest in my life, even though I have opportunity to sleep 10 hours a night or 9 hours a night or 8 hours a night, whatever it is that you need, 
I have time to, to, to sit back and, and, and uh, read or, or sit back and watch TV. But I've got anxiety. I just don't feel rested. What the Holy Spirit is telling us here is whose voice are you listening to? He's asking, whose voice are you listening to today? And I want to encourage you to listen to the voice of God. Be aware of this. I mean, these are warning signals that are going off. These are bells and whistles. If, if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're depressed, if, if these things are, are consuming you, these are bells and whistles that God gives us to go off in us to go, whoa, wait a minute, I need to look at some things. And that's what the Holy Spirit is saying through David right here. There's no way that we can ever enter his place of rest if we replace God with something else and I want to finish out before we take the Lord's Supper 1 John chapter 5 and next week we'll finish this part of this lesson but in 1 John chapter 5 verse 11 and this is what God has testified this is God's testimony this is God's declaration he has given us eternal life. All right. Man, he's given us eternal life. Man, Lord Jesus, come quickly. But we don't have to wait, all right? He has given us eternal life, and this life is where? It's in his Son. It's in Jesus. Whoever has the Son has life. What life? Eternal life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Folks, we have eternal life now. God is not playing hide and seek with us. God is, is before us and with us and in us. And he says that if we have Jesus, we have eternal life now. And it's all because of what Jesus did on that cross. So if you want to go ahead and get your Lord's Supper ready. It's all because of what Jesus did. That we can have rest. Even when it seems like the wheels are coming off all around us. Because no one can steal what Jesus is giving to you and me today. Through what he did on this cross. Taking your sin, taking my sin, becoming our sin. So that we could have eternal life now so Lord Jesus I just want to say thank you so much for what you did on that cross and you gave your body and your life physically so that we could live eternally with you forever beginning right now today by trusting you thanking you just being awestruck with wonder so Jesus thank you and as we get the fruit of the vine Lord Jesus you tell us that this is representative of your blood that you gave for us So, Lord, help us to take this in confidence because you gave it. 
so that we can live. Help us to live, Lord, in you. And Lord, I just pray that we've had our eyes open today and our hearts open today to you and your word. That where rest is and what you desire is to have fellowship with us right now, today. Lord, I pray that even more of us would join these Bible studies that we're doing online that Dean is picking out. They've been, man, they've been such a blessing because they're encouraging us through your word to know that you desire this fellowship with us now. So, Father, my prayer is if there's any that are watching on uh, Zoom or YouTube later or any in this group inside this room right now, Father, if we're struggling in this way and, and we're thinking, you know what, man, I want this. I want Jesus. I want, I want eternal life. I want this rest, but I, I'm just having a hard time. God, you put us together as a family to encourage each other and to lift each other up. So, Lord, I just pray that, that we won't be... Um, I, I don't know, I can't think of a better word than maybe a shame to say, you know what? Man, this stuff's getting the best of me. I need some help. And help us to come alongside one another as you, Holy Spirit, come alongside of us and walk with us and run with us and fill us up with yourself. God, help us to, to seek you and seek our brothers and sisters, and the encouragement we can be to one another and to pray for one another. So, Father, I pray for all of us today to have this rest. Thank you. And in Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to say again, as we did last week, that if you're here and, and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and, and you want to be baptized into Christ, and we're going to talk about this, oh, I don't know few weeks uh, because to me you talk about an awestruck wonder uh, it, it's just an awestruck wonder about how much God loves us and, and what he offers us and 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 it is so amazing but if you want to be baptized into Christ and and you know you know what I'm ready to be born again now today uh, we can get that baptistry ready and 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 probably by this afternoon sometime water will be warm you can be baptized today but all you need to do is uh, just just give me a call or a text or or something like that and uh, we can we can sure take care of that and uh, again my prayer is is that we'll find rest